service. We are the house of prayer for everyone. We would love for you to be fully engaged in worshiping our God today. So let's have everybody stand. Let's all stand together. Hear the call to worship from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false, he will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of God, O God of Jacob. Amen. Let's confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Let's bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for being the all-knowing God. You know our hearts, joys, our struggles, and our pain. You know all that we go through even when we don't express it. Thank you for caring for each and every one of us and for being the hope we can trust in. Thank you for being our comfort in times of tribulation. 
We thank you for showing us your abundant love and teaching us how to love others. You are the God of the poor, lowly, and oppressed. You are God of the fatherless and the lost. You love all without any reservations. Jesus, we pray for revival in our nation and in our hearts. Lord, we need you. There is so much going on in the world, but there is nothing that is impossible for you. It is never and will never be too much for you. We know that you are always in control. Thank you for reminding us that you have called us to be men and women of prayer. May we reflect upon ourselves and be the people you have called us to be. May we be the light in the darkness and help us to see people where they are, be mindful of their needs, and be your hands and feet. Lord, we pray for the leaders of this nation. They need you now more than ever, and I pray that you would penetrate even the hardest of hearts. I pray that you will be, that you will write things that are wrong, and that you would pour your wisdom out to every corner of this nation. Even in the midst of all that is going on, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to worship you. Please be with Pastor Q as he gives your message. Thank you for his heart and the way you speak to him. And thank you for his leadership and how he shepherds his flock. Lord, thank you for Hope Church. Please be with all of our members this week. I pray that you will meet them wherever they are and fill them with your presence. Thank you for always hearing our prayers. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi again. We are so happy to have you worshiping with us. We are Hope Church. My name is Mimi Kim. I'm one of the pastors here. We're located in Clarksville, Maryland. I have some announcements for you. As we hear of restrictions being lifted and moving from phase one to phase two, uh, Hope Church has been talking about the different possibilities such as outdoor worship or multiple services to accommodate social distancing. But for now, we are doing all our gatherings, including Sunday worship and our Wednesday midweek prayer. We're doing those virtually and online. And as things change, we will let you know. We do have ministry time every single Sunday, immediately after the worship service, after the benediction is given. Um, if you check our website, there is the Zoom link. We have pastors as well as our elders in the rooms waiting and willing to pray for you. Today, we are going to have communion. We announced this last Sunday, so hopefully you've prepared the elements of bread and wine or juice in advance and you have them ready. We will be doing communion today immediately after the sermon. This is a new announcement from our outreach ministry. Efren Ku is our ministry outreach ministry leader, and he is looking for volunteers for this upcoming virtual outreach to healthcare workers. It's going to be a time where we will spend um, encouraging the healthcare workers, uh, sharing the gospel with them, uh, listening to them, thanking them, and praying for them. But we need you, we need you to volunteer to do this. So if you're interested, the contact information is right there on your screen, please email Efren at outreach at hopemd.church. We are doing virtual home visitations. The pastors have sent out an email. You should have received it already. So please, please, please don't delay in signing up for your time slot. This will be during the month of June. We'd love to see you uh, virtually, so please sign up. We sent a survey out, a very brief survey uh, on reopening the building for corporate worship. Uh, you should have received it already. Today is the deadline. So if you have not filled it out, I promise you it's literally like a two minute survey. If you have not done it already, please do it today um, because today's the last day for you to be able to do that. Beholding Place 2.0 is our Bible study. It's an in-depth look into the book of Philippians led by Pastor Q, and that happens every Saturday morning. If you would like information for the Zoom link, please email Pastor Q directly, or it is also live streamed on our Facebook page. So you can join us using that, using Facebook as well. 
Our VBS 2020 is Rocky Railway, and we have completely reimagined it. It is going to be August 14th through the 16th. Those are our new dates. Registration link is on our website, so please go there and click on it and register. Remember, if you register by the end of this month, by June 30th, then we will be able to prepare in advance a VBS kit for your children. So please, please, please register before June 30th and let all your friends, neighbors, and community know about it. This month, our missions partner that we're highlighting is Dustin Garner. He is a member of our church. He's YOM staff at Kansas City, Missouri. You can read right there um, his updated prayer requests. There's more information on him as well as our other missions partners on our website under the tab missions. So please be in prayer for him as well as all our other missions partners. At this time, we would love for you to get your electronic devices and using our app, the Venmo app, to be able to send in your tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, that we're able to, on this beautiful Sunday, come before you to worship you. So God, we lift up this offering that has been collected, sent by your faithful ones, God. So we thank you as we lift up this offering to you, God. Father, even in the midst of this pandemic that is still going on, with many people suffering financially, Father, we pray, God, that you would receive this offering and that it would be used for your glory, for your kingdom, God. Father, we want to pray for our missions partners, particularly highlighting um, Dustin Garner for this month. Father, he and other missionaries are suffering financially, God, because of their supporters who may have lost jobs and, Father, have um, not been able to give as they have been. So, Father, we ask for those, all your missionaries and those who are serving you all around the world, God, that you are the great Jehovah Jireh, the provider. And so as they look to you, Father, would you be faithful to them and provide for them? So we lift them up before you. We also lift up our sister Rana, who is in the hospital. Father, we pray for her and her mother and her family, God. Father, that your hand will be upon them. Your healing would come into that hospital room. And for others who are sick, Father, among us in our community, our loved ones, Father, you are the great healer, the great physician. So Lord, would you come and would you touch them with your healing hand? We lift up all these prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good all the time. God is good. It never gets old. I love declaring how God is good and he is good all the time. Especially in the season we are in with all the different uh, clamors and different things going on, we are reminded, I'm reminded, my solid ground is in the faithfulness and goodness of my God. In midst of all things, I sense and I know God is making all things new. He's, he's making way in the wilderness where there was no way. He is making rivers to flow in the dry and barren deserts. And the deep things of our hearts are being revealed. We see the desperate need of the grace and mercy of our God. The deep-seated sinfulness, injustice personally and hopefully are being revealed and we are reminded, we are called, we are awakened to turn to God and 
seek God for his grace. We know injustice makes God angry. And it makes us angry also. If one of us is denied justice, none of us can ignore it. If one of us isn't saved, none of us are saved. If one of us can be abused, all of us will lose. The Bible says, open your mouth on behalf of those unable to speak for the legal rights of all the dying. Proverbs 3, 31, verse 8. I've been in prayer um, in the last probably weeks, a few weeks more than any other time, seeking God for God's will. And I am, in the midst of all that, I am just reminded with the certainty of God's truth that when Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. This is a certain word and truth that I can build my life upon. And last, last week, God, has, God was bringing me, in the midst of all the issues and the difficulties in this life, to the core of the message of the truth in the Word of God for the solutions, for the hope in this world. God took us last week about God's compassion. God took us to the greatest command God gave, which is to love the Lord your God with all your being and to love our neighbor as ourselves, which is the greatest commandment. Today, God led me to really look upon the greatest, great commission our Lord Jesus Christ gave before he ascended back to the Father as the solution, as the hope of this world. The title, it'll be, You'll Be My Witnesses. I found that beautiful uh, drawing. I love it. I don't know, whatever that is, it's beautiful. Love it. You'll be my witnesses. The text today, really, there are many texts, but I'll be focusing on Acts chapter 1, verse 8, as well as Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Let me begin with the greatest, great commission we know as, and every gospel, four gospels, Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke, as well as book of Acts, gives and writes, record, records our Lord Jesus' final and great commission he gave to the people of God. First of all, in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 21, Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. His great commission to the body of Christ, people of God, is that we will go and make disciples of all nations. And Mark and Jesus says this way, go into all the world and preach the gospel all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. And he who has been has disbelieved, shall be condemned. And God, Great Commission says to go and preach the gospel to all the world. In, in John chapter 20, verse 21, Jesus on the night, uh, on the evening after his resurrection, comes to the disciples and says, Peace be with you, as the Father sent me, I also send you. Jesus saying, I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. Jesus says, As just as Father sent me, I send you. When you come to Luke, it, it says in this way, Jesus opened Open, open their minds to understand the scripture. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. And the repentance for forgiveness of sins will be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. Beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, I'm sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. 
This is the great commission Jesus gave, recorded in Book of Acts and Book of Acts. Book of Acts. The writer of Gospel of Luke continues on the thought and writes in this way. Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. You see, when Jesus, after all that he has done on earth, he, his death and resurrection, and on the cross, he said, it is finished. When he ascended to the Father, he gave to his disciples the commission to go and take his message, his word, to the ends of the earth. And with the gospel, that gospel will transform this world, and God's glory will come on earth. I want to just focus on Acts chapter 1, verse 8. My witness, Jesus says. Let me slow down and look at it a little bit. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses. The word, Greek word is martus, where the word martyr come from. Both in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, even to the remotest part of the earth. Our Lord Jesus says that you will be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses. All in, from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. And, and to do that, you, receive, you have to receive the Holy Spirit and his power in you. And Jesus says in the Great Commission, that it will be by his Spirit, not by our own strength. It is by, by his Spirit, his power. Jesus command, he's commanded the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for Father's timing, for the Father's promise, God's timing, God's way, God's power, not our power. That God's power is to make us become His witnesses. Holy Spirit comes and lives in all the sons and daughters of God and, and working in us, making us His witnesses. One who bears His truth, His word and message. And not only in truth, but also be becoming a person, a, a person of that, carrying the gospel of Christ. Word witness in Greek, as I said, martus, from which we get the word martyr, one who dies even for the message, speaks of one who carries the message in heart of our God, even with the privilege of dying for truth. We are called to be his witnesses. It says, from Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria, to even to the ends of the earth, it is to all the peoples. The gospel for all the peoples, all the nations, and all the tribes, and all the tongues. It is God's desire that his love and grace to go to the ends of the earth, to all people, regardless of race, ethnic background, or culture, all will come and hear and find life and life that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He said it is to go to Jerusalem, it is to go to Jerusalem, first of all, starting from our home, our backyard, to all Judea and Samaria, to our nearby neighbors, even our antagonists, even to the remotest part of the earth. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation. The message of Christ the correct commission is to go. Go. It's not just stay, go. Now, I thought, I've been praying about, thought, thinking about this. How do we fulfill this commandment to go? When you look at this great commission, we always often thought of it as overseas missions, going over other nations. That is true. But you start with our home, start with our neighborhood. You see, start with where we are, where I'm living, and where my life is going on. And I thought about it, and as I prayed about it, I realized there are many examples of this in the Bible, especially Book of Acts. But for me, the best example is example of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he witnessed of God the Father, how he brought Father's message. He is the greatest example, how he loved us. 
how he brought his truth to, the, to all the peoples. Let me just highlight a few examples. I thought about, and God reminded me about Zacchaeus. You know the story of the tax collector, the short man. We used to sing a song, Zacchaeus the short man, and, 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 and Jesus is going with crowd around him, people thronging, and he is going, and in the midst of it, see a man on a tree, and Jesus says, Zacchaeus, come down, for I'm going to stay with you. There is very amazing thing Jesus does. He didn't say, you, I see you, I'm going to go to hell. He says, Zacchaeus, he knew his name. He called him by name. You see, there's something about name. It's, it's knowing the person, knowing who you are. You see, when you see those around who are hurting, it is not somebody out there. It is actually when you begin to understand who they are, the, the, even naming them helps us to come close to who they are, where they are. When you get to know people, we begin to love people. That's not just one of the many, but knowing the person. Jesus came and called and stopped for Zacchaeus. And you also know the story of a Samaritan woman. This amazing story how Jesus, Bible says, had to go through Samaria when most of the Jews would go around taking a longer way to bypass that place. But Jesus, he had to go through Samaria because there was a woman, not only a woman, a Samaritan woman, not only a, a Samaritan uh, a woman, but she also was a, to say the least, not respectable woman. Jesus went and stopped for intention for that woman because she is in need. And Jesus goes and talks to her and shows the Father. And she comes and believes in who Christ is. She, he, Jesus transforms her life. She comes to trust in God. She becomes a transformed person. You see, Jesus Christ will stop for one, took time for one, especially the afflicted, the poor, and the hurting, the rejected, outcasts, and shunned ones. He will stop for them. What about the woman in adult, caught in adultery? You know the story, how this woman caught in the very act of Adultery. We do not know where the man is, but all the crowd brought the woman before Jesus, saying the law commanded, demanded that she be stoned to death. And Jesus stood for that woman. And when all the crowd walked away, Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Jesus stood for the woman, protected the woman from the accusers. Jesus stood and gave mercy and grace for that woman. Isn't that how the, word, the, the being a witness, taking the word of God is? Standing and, and protecting and, and standing with those who I need. Even those accused and broken ones. Bringing the message of God's salvation in Christ Jesus. That Jesus is one who forgives. And there are few instances in the Bible where Jesus got angry. He was grieved. One of those instances is where Jesus goes to a synagogue on, on Sabbath and there was a man with withered hand. And, and people are all watching whether Jesus you know, would break the law, the tradition, to heal the man on the Sabbath. And Jesus, looking at them, he was grieved with anger. That these people cared more about the law than the person. Jesus even broke their laws and tradition for the sake of a person. And this is probably one of, my, one of the most dramatic stories in the whole Bible. Not only did Jesus stop for the one, not only did he protect even the accused and stood and, and gave mercy, not only did he, he even broke the laws and traditions to heal the man with withered hand, but he also stood against the authorities. Jesus goes to the temple the last week before his death on the cross. He goes to the temple where, and he overturned the tables and, 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 and pushed out and drove out the money changers and all the people are selling and, and buying because they were desecrating the temple. 
and Jesus, and she says, and you know, and because not only were they uh, turning that temple into a marketplace, they were also hindering Gentiles to come to know God, to worship God. Jesus, she even stood against the authorities, the religious authorities for the poor and those who are needy, those who are needed. Because to say it is for all the nations to come and know God. This is how the message, the witness of our Lord Jesus Christ went forth. He was a supreme example how to bring the message, the life of God. He is our Lord and our Savior. He is the way, truth, and life. You see, in my prayer, God reminded me there are so many ideas how to solve the issues and the, and the problems in, in the world, in our nation. You have a lot of political ideas, political different activism, all those things. And God reminded me, Jesus is the way, truth, and life. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. His way is the right way. His way is go and be my witnesses, preach the gospel, good news. The kingdom of God will go forth. And God led me, reminded me another thing, the test of the being a witness of, for Christ. I saw the answer in, in the Matthew chapter 25 when Jesus speaks about the last day and time of the great Separation, very familiar passage. I'm going to read the story slowly, and, and I want you to see what Jesus says. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Christ our Lord will return in his glory. He will make all things right. He will bring justice in the, in the nation. He will judge all people with his righteousness and justice. He says, all the nations will be gathered before him. Let me just tell you, I need to say something here. The phrase, all the nations, I don't know if you remember, in the great, greatest, great commission in Matthew 28, it says, go to all the nations, make disciples of all the nations. Same phrase Jesus uses right here. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another. As a shepherd separates sheep from the goats, and he will put sheep on his right and the goat on the left. And then, then the king, Jesus, will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom of prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And he says, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me in. Naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, fed you, or thirsty and gave you Drink, something to drink. And when did we see you, a stranger, and invite you in? And na or naked and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and came to you? And Jesus says, the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brothers of mine, even to the least of them, you did did it to me. I want, to I want you to feel that weight of that word. When you do it to the least of these, oh brothers of mine, you did it to me. I want you to see in this, con in this passage, this story, this message in the context of great commission. We all often have seen great commission as going and preaching the gospel. Somehow the words you speak, yes, that's true. But here you see Jesus puts it in the context of loving and caring, living our compassion in this world. And, then, and he will also say to those in the left, 
Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was, str- I was a stranger, you did not invite me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. And those on the left would say, Lord, when do we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And the Lord, the king says, he will say to them, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. Do you sense the weight of this passage? A sheep or a goat. It is so easy to detach and separate the great commission from the greatest commandment. You see, God has reminded me in many ways, great commission and great command, greatest command is one and the same. Great, great commission and the greatest command is one and the same in many ways. We love our neighbors best as we love them with all of our lives. Speaking love with truth. We, we live as witnesses of Christ best as we speak to them with all of our lives, speaking truth in love. As God was reminding of us his heart, his heart for the broken and hurting, all the peoples of the earth, how he called us to love everyone, every, our neighbor with his heart, that compassion feels, compassion does something, and compassion causes something. That loving our neighbor, it is the Great Commission. Great Commission is not going and preaching or keeping our track. It is actually living out His message, His love in our lives. And we speak truth in love. We need to speak, we need to love with truth. God is speaking to me. The solution that we are needed in this world is more than all the political action, trying to change the system. All those that may be helpful and needed, but what is what God is saying, a change of our heart that comes when people come and meet God, can see the truth. Jesus is the way, truth, and life. When you come to see Him, our lives are changed, our hearts are changed, our pers- perspectives are changed. God calls us to love with his message, with his truth. Am I going? She said, go. Don't just sit still. Go. Move. And make disciples of all nations. Preach the gospel to all the nations. Even Judea and Samaria, even the people that I'm not comfortable with. Isn't that what? John 3, 6 says about God so loved the world that he gave I'm stuck in that verse. I could not get out for the last six months. I'm stuck in that verse. God so loved the world, all the peoples, all the peoples, that he gave his only son. Am I becoming a witness of Christ Jesus? You see, being a witness is not just talks or even articulating the message. It is about us ourselves living his truth. And it shows by how we care, love people as well. In the time we are in, you see, when God was saying, God God was really convicting me and speaking to us last week, how and it is, it is God's word is right and true. It's not a political thing. It is really God's true, the word of God, God's heart thing that all 
Not only all lives matter, black lives matter. I'm not talking about endorsing some kind of political organization. I'm talking about God saying black lives, people matter. Our black brothers and sisters and the black community matter to God. Because all lives matter before God. They matter. And that God said, love your neighbor. And that we bring his message, his truth. We are witnesses of that. The Christ is the answer. His forgiveness is the answer. His reconciliation is the answer. We come as people called to be witnesses of who Christ is. His message and truth. Jesus said, you will receive power, God's strength, God's empowering presence, Holy Spirit working and moving within you. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. This is his heart, his commission for the body of Christ. Go. And speak truth in love. Go and love with truth. Our God loves us. Our God calls us. This is who we are. We are people who carry this message. We are called to be in the ministry work of reconciliation, reconciling all people to God. As you do that, as you do that, reconciliation among the peoples as well. We love you, God. Let's come to God in prayer. Let me ask you to put your hands on your heart. Do you hear the heart of God? Do you hear, do you sense the heart of God? God who so loved the world, he gave even his only son. That God says, my greatest command is love your neighbor as yourself. He said, my commission, my commission to you is go and bring this message of his love, his grace to all the peoples. No matter what background, no matter where they are, you bring that message, you live that message even to the point of dying for his sake. That is his calling. Do you feel his heart? Do you sense his heart? God, I come, we come and say, we are yours, God. You are the way, truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through you, God, Lord Jesus. We come today. Oh, we are asking for your presence, Holy Spirit of God, in our lives, your power and strength, to become the witnesses of our Lord Jesus. Father, I ask our lives will speak with love and truth to all those around. And the truth to set people free will find life that is in you. Oh God, I ask your urgency to go and be with people, love people, declaring your goodness and mercy, God. We honor you. Let hope be what you call us to be, people on a mission with love of God. We love you, we honor you. We pray for your grace. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. We here at Hope Church, we regularly celebrate the sacrament of communion at least once a month, and so we do so today. We know that it's unusual because we cannot gather together physically, but as we had announced, we hope that in your individual homes that you have already prepared the elements of bread and wine or juice to share with your families and your household. And so we come. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all those who trust him to come, to come and share in what he has prepared for us. Let's pray. 
Gracious God, would you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon all those that have come before you to this table that you have sent out the invitation to. Lord, we ask that these, your gifts of bread and wine, God, that this bread that we break and the cup that we bless may be the communion, God, of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. And it is by your Spirit that you would make us one with Christ, that we may truly be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, would you send us out to be the body of Christ in the world? remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ. So we take from your creation this bread and this wine, and we joyfully celebrate our Lord Jesus' dying and rising as we await the day of his coming again. And so it is with thanksgiving we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We know that on the night of his arrest, that our Lord Jesus Christ, that he was sharing his last meal, a Passover meal, with his closest friends, with his disciples. So he sat at table with his disciples, and he took the bread that was on the table, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So at this time, I would like you to go ahead and take the bread and as our Lord Jesus said to his disciples, to go ahead and take and eat, knowing that this is his body given for us. At the same time, he took the cup that was on the table full of wine, and he said, this is the cup, the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this also in remembrance of me. So at this time, to go ahead and everyone drink. And so it is that every time we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come before you and we thank you for these wonderful gifts, gifts that you have given to us, God. And Lord, as you have commanded us to do this in remembrance of you. And so, Father, even though we are physically unable to gather together, we heed your commands and we do this in remembrance of you, remembering and knowing that we are the body of Christ. And Father, we are so forever grateful for the saving work that you have done through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blood that was shed. So God, we are forever grateful, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you, the praise team is back up here, we invite you to stand again with us and to sing this praise. Jesus. 
begotten Son, so whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I want you to hear very clearly. If you have not found hope and salvation, forgiveness in our Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to hear what our Lord Jesus says. God so loved you, shed His blood for you, that you may find life and hope that is in God. If you have never came to know Christ, if you have never found life in God, in Christ Jesus, today is the day you can turn to Him. Come to Him. Trust in Jesus for His love and grace, His death for your sins, and trust in Him for your life and hope. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. You'll find life and hope, redemption, salvation, and forgiveness of sins in your life. Come to Him. I want to encourage also all of us, all of you, remembering there are many around us who, needs, who need to hear, find God's grace and mercy. Father, God has given us the message and love of God, the Christ to share with others, the love. We are called to speak the truth in love. It's to go and make disciples of all nations. I want to challenge you. I want to invite you, people of God. Follow Him. Obey Him. Serve Him. Give your life. Follow His ways. You'll see God's glory come. His kingdom come. Life being transformed. Let's come to God in prayer. Father, we love you. We honor you. We give you glory. 
we give you thanks. We are yours, oh God. We thank you, God. You so love the word, us, God. You even gave your only son, Jesus, even to die on the cross, to save us, restore us, and give us new life and eternal hope. We thank you, God. We thank you for the great message, the word you have given us, the life you have given us, to go and share your love, your word with others, God, to see your kingdom come, to see your love come, God. Use us. Father, we want to obey. We want to follow your ways. Use us for your glory, God. We want to see our loves. We want to see the whole world to come and find you, your hope, God. So guide us, lead us, move us, God. Strengthen us. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God, the Father, the communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit of God be upon all who trust in Christ Jesus. Be upon all who are worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ, even now together with us. From now until forever and ever more. Amen. Amen. If you need any prayer, if you need any help, please join us for the time of ministry. Pastors and elders will join you and pray with you. If you need to find hope and salvation in Christ Jesus, Please come and join us. If you need any prayers, come. We want to pray for you. We want to encourage you in His grace.